we can do it in 20 or 30 years. We can at least reduce its, the, you can say, time frame of improvement. And uh, there comes the uh, genomics. A traditional way to improve the animals or the uh, plant productivity is the first step is to define its breeding objective. What you want your animal like to be or what you want your plant, in plant your rice or wheat or any other uh, cash crop, what you want in production. You want it resistant against the diseases, you want is the uh, high production or what should be the grain quality, or if you talk the animals, how much should be the milk, or how much should be the meat from that animal. This is your objective, and you define it with the farmers or with the community. Then the second is the uh, step is the recording. That's the, in animals, we say pedigree and performance recording, and in uh, plants, it would be definitely the line performance or record of your all, all lines which you have developed and their performance in the field or uh, in the glass house. In the third, third step, you have uh, the data and all the analysis of data. And this is what we are talking about, the quantitative data. In cattle, it could be the milk production, it could be the milk composition. In plants, it could be the grains, like uh, we talk about the uh, wheat. It could be grain size, it could be its production per plant or production per area. And then next, it could be the other chemical parameters of the grains or uh, traits related to its uh, storage or all those stuff. So you have the data with that, and you are starting to play with that, that data. And that's the uh, we call the analysis of the data. After analysis, you are those particular uh, whatsoever uh, you can say strains. Uh, and then among the, those strains are those uh, animals you select the better one and start their breeding. At the next stage, in, in animals, we have another added advantage, which is the artificial insemination and embryo transfer. This can enhance the pace and this uh, technology has been developed over the last 30 years and now it's pretty much mature that AI plus embryo transfer technology is it can enhance or double your genetic gain. And the last, the most recent technology, which, uh, which, which we are the eyewitness of its uh, development uh, from uh, uh, last two decades, you can say almost uh, uh, in 2000 to, uh, to, to that is the genomic. The application of the uh, fingerprints of your genome or markers of your genome to predict your productivity, uh, productivity of the animals. This is a basic uh, theory of how the advent of two technologies, amplitude transfer and genomics. We can accelerate our pace of the gen uh, genetic improvement program. And this is what we uh, tried to say in the national uh, the funding, which was won by the in, uh, 2018. Uh, so what we do basically, so there are three ma major component. If we summarize the last slide, the first one is the data recording and uh, artificial insemination. You must have the data for that. The, you are recording your data. And that is actual data, true data. It's not the falsified or exaggerated data. Then in second step, you can get technologies that is the Dr. Sahib, you have presented your mic and your presentation. Yes, sir. Can you listen to me, please? 
again yes sir or you can see the presentation okay uh, that was because of the interruption of the internet so we are back on track again so genome selection pipeline which we have developed in our own lab uh, we received a uh, funding of uh, 60 million 6 million from the pal usaid program and in that program we genotyped the almost 2000 animals and recorded their uh, body weights and other traits and uh, develop our own pipeline for the selection of the uh, goat uh, in particular and in general this can be applied to the plants as well as the other livestock species so first step was the sampling uh, in the genomic selection then you get a genotype and gen Is, uh, uh, generally, it's uh, carried out commercially for the machine at our own. So this is more viable because there are a lot of uh, delicate work involved in the genotyping, and most of the work uh, carried out by the companies these are robotic, you can say. So companies can afford it, and the, uh, another fact. Uh, the cartridge of the is a very costly uh, contract the national companies they are working there and uh, continuously Assalamualaikum again. <laughs> Hello. Can you hear me again? Yes, we can hear you. Sorry, uh, internet interruption. Sorry, my data changed here. Okay, we are uh, back on track. Genomic pipeline. I was just telling you the sample. Then after sampling, uh, we go for the genotyping. And uh, mostly we go for the commercial options. Uh, we don't uh, do it at institu institutional level because this is very costly. Then a uh, company is going to give you the raw files. Once you give your DNA sample or tissue sample, they, they will extract DNA and then they genotype it and give you the physical data. That's the raw files. Now those raw files, they are specialized uh, uh, softwares with the help of that you convert them in a specific format to analyze them and next step is the association analysis and its equation now suppose you are working on the milk production in case of uh, dairy cattle or for example the uh, uh, yield per acre for wheat production then you develop uh, an equation first you identify the snps or genes which are involved in the, that production and those uh, genes, on the basis of that, you develop an equation. That is the basically prediction equation. That on the next generation or on the next sample, you are going to predict without its performance that what could be the possible performance of that uh, specific uh, animal or specific strain of uh, uh, crop. And that we call the uh, basically 
uh, breeding value. That's the uh, predicted breeding value and technically called the genomics uh, uh, breeding value or genomics estimated breeding value. That is always predicted. Uh, what we do in traditional means in crops or in animals, we get the data and we, uh, on the quantitative basis or on the basis of quantitative genetics, we uh, predict the breeding value. But here we use its DNA profiling or its marker information to predict the uh, performance of the animal or the, uh, you can say, crops. Now there are different uh, solutions available uh, for the chip, DNA chip or SNP chip uh, in uh, uh, livestock. Uh, I will talk about the livestock. Similarly, different chips are, uh, are available for the crops. Uh, in livestock, we categorize them in uh, three uh, major ca uh, categories. Uh, the first type is the uh, small chip that's up to uh, up to 2K or they have, these chips have around 2000 SNPs. Then the uh, medium, uh, medium chip, that's the LD, low density chip that is five to 30K, then the medium density and the biggest one is the HD. So most prevailing uh, chips now in the market are the HD or the high density chips, which have SNPs around 5,000 to, uh, sorry, 500 to uh, 100,000 K. And if you have money, uh, you can go for the WGS. WGS is basically the whole genome sequencing. Now, uh, where is the whole genome sequencing important? For example, if you talk about the human, so our genome size is 3.2 billion SNPs, or you can say alphabets, that is the uh, ATG. There are 3.2 billion. If we have the 70K, 700K chips, that means we have only 7 lakh different variations of our genome which are encoded in that chip. Rather, what we have, we have more, more than that. And that's uh, almost, uh, you can say, what we are having in the chip, that is uh, just 1% or 2% of the entire genome. So some scientists uh, argue that if you are going for the 2% uh, of the genome to predict the performance of the entire genome, it does not make any sense. So why not to go for the whole genome sequencing? This is definitely costly. Even today, the cost for whole genome sequencing of single animal is around $1,000. Compared to that, the SNP, if you use the chip, chip that is uh, for uh, HD chip, it's around $60 for one animal. So one sample, you cost $60 for HD. And if you go for the whole genome sequencing, this is around $1,000. So you can estimate where you are talking about the thousand of the animals then how much cost it will cost you to predict the, uh, to develop a prediction equation for your animals or for, or for your crops. So there are two platforms which we commercially available. One is the Alumina, other is the Epimetrix. So these are two companies actually which develop the chips and they make an analysis for you. In livestock species, these chips are different sizes. They are available for cattle, buffalo, goat, sheep, chicken, horse, and camel. Similarly, I just mentioned you that uh, in case of crops and cash crops, these all chips are available. And uh, if anyone is interested to such sort of project, they must have enough funding to uh, develop a prediction equation. And once you have prediction equation, then it's quite easy for you to predict the performance of the crops or the animals without having their phenotypic data. Now, what we did, we use the Alumina 50K gold bead chip. That is basically medium density chip uh, in our uh, this uh, USAID project. And we genotyped around uh, 2000 animals and recorded their phenotypes. Now what company have given us, I have, uh, I'm sharing my screen with you. Raw genotype file look like that. So there are three files. And if you uh, just uh, concentrate on the uh, extension of these files, so one is the CSV, CSV that comma separated file. The other one is the text file and there are two text files. So the CSV file is basically your genotype information and the TXT file, one is the map, that is your sample map. And the other one is the SNP map. So SNP map basically your chip map, entire 
chip map is available and that is company is going to provide you that uh, data and uh, the map information is needed for analysis because map information will give you in which chromosome, which uh, SNP or uh, the variant is uh, uh, located. For example, chromosome one, the SNP, which position, which SNP is there. So map uh, file is quite mandatory without that you cannot make analysis and generally the companies, when they give you the, your genotype data, they will provide you the SNP map of that chip which they have utilized on your data. Okay, now these are the raw files. If you see, they are specific uh, text editor softwares and uh, the are good text editor software that require uh, licensing. And uh, the file looks like this, uh, these two files. I've shown you DNA report, then SNP MAV file, and then the sample MAV file. Now these files, we have permitted them and uh, you can see now these three files, they have been converted into the map, ped, map and ped files. So I hope that uh, especially people who are uh, linked with the genetics, they know the Plink software that is freeware basically. And Plink uses two type of files, map and ped files. So what we do with the help of a third software, we convert our company results into the ped and map file. So text files, these are converted into the map and pad file. Pad file is basically pedigree file and map file is basically your uh, SNPs uh, mapping on uh, whole entire genome. Okay, so after you have formatted the files, this is how your uh, map file look like. So you can see, for example, there are uh, columns, first column here in my screen, you can see it's zero. So this is basically chromosome and then your SNP name. So here, for example, SNP 10, 13, four, this is the first uh, SNP. Uh, and uh, then followed uh, by it's uh, uh, other position. Uh, well, now, uh, pet files in, uh, in livestock, what we do, we have the uh, it's family ID, then the individual ID, and after that we have its sex, then uh, um, it's a, uh, um, Gene, uh, sorry, phenotype information. In this case, in this file, you can see that there is minus nine and minus nine means that uh, there is no phenotype involved. Zero, zero, that means that we don't know its father or its dam. And another zero that indicates here, you can see, that means we don't know the sex. So basically the family ID, individual ID, then its sex, then its father or its uh, dam and the last one is the, the, the phenotype of that animal. And after that, it's continued with the genotype information. So these are two basic files which we need for uh, genomic analysis. Now these basic files, they are converted into binary files because the Plink or any other software which we use for the genomic analysis, they are more comfort, comfortable with the binary coding of the data. So these two files, they will generate another three files that we call the FAM files. BIM files and bed files. So these three files will be generated and these will be utilized for the subsequent analysis. Now, after you run the association analysis, which we did in our case, and you will see a result like this one. For example, the first column is the, uh, uh, if you look into the first column, first column is the chromosome, then is the SNP and position. Position, I told you that map file that is going to give you the exact position of that SNP. Then come the N miss mean number of miss, allele one and allele two. We know that the most of the livestock species and uh, including we human, we are bi allele. So we have two alleles. So there are allele one and allele zero or A and B, or we also uh, categorize them as a major allele and as a minor allele. And then come the p-value. P-value uh, here on my screen, I will try to, uh, uh, yeah, p-board, you can see p-board. So p-board is basically adjusted p-value against that SNP, that how much that SNP is significant for that particular trait. If we are talking about the uh, body weight, for body weight is that SNP is significant or not among the 50,000 different variants, which, uh, SNPs, they are important for that particular trait. In our case, it was the body weight of the animal. 
Now, this all data that can be translated into a diagram. If you are a good user of the R program, then it would be quite easy for you. There are lots of packages available and definitely you need basic knowledge of the R to run these scripts. And these data will be converted into the, uh, you can say beautiful uh, Flurry uh, type of, uh, you can say plots. Here in this case, uh, in our case, we, we got 10 SNPs out of 50,000 SNPs, which have significant, <coughs> sorry, significant effect on the performance in terms of the body weight of the uh, uh, goat. So these, uh, you can see the location, chromosome one to 30. So there are 30 chromosomes in a uh, goat. So these are spread around, you can say entire genome. And uh, these 10 SNP, these are the most significantly affecting the uh, body weight of the animals. Now these 10, uh, uh, you can say SNPs, they will be utilized to predict the performance of the animals. This is called the prediction equation. First, you will go for the association and you will find out the significant, uh, significant SNPs. And those SNP then would be utilized or used in next step to predict the performance of the animals or performance of the individual, or even in the, uh, uh, you can say human side, we predict the susceptibility of particular human being against particular disease. For example, liver cirrhosis, or liver dysfunctioning or any other disease or heart disease that if particular genotype is there and that individual is expected to be more prone to that specific disease. So this is all based on the prediction. Once you know the SNPs, those SNP can be utilized to predict the performance or susceptibility against the diseases. And that is basically against an equation that we call the prediction equation or prediction model. Based on this basic information, you develop the prediction model, which we have developed in our case. So why is basically prediction and dimension vector of your phenotype? In other words, simply, this is the predicted phenotype. If this is the disease data, so this would be the predicted, you can say, occurrence of disease. Then second thing in this equation is the one and mu. Mu, everybody knows this is basically mean of the population. So one n, that is the n-dimensional vector of ones, and mu is general mean. So basically, general population mean. Now, the third one is the factors which you are including in your studies. For example, sex, it could be a factor, or area of that animal or individual or human being, that could be a factor. If you are talking about the disease, then the smoking, it could be a factor. So these are called fixed effects. So there are two types of effects. Uh, statistic, uh, statisticians, they know about it, or the people who are involved in the genetics, they also know. They are fixed and they are random effects. There are two types of effects. So you are accounting for your fixed effect and random effects. I just gave you example, for example, sex of the individual, that would be the fixed. You cannot change it. Environment, it could be a random effect. So uh, the third thing in this model is the uh, matrix of those effects, accumulative uh, uh, factors, it could be one, two, 10, 20, any number of the factors. Then the third one is basically the P matrix of the genotype. This is what is the most important thing that based on your genotype, you are predicting why. If we consider all the factors and population mean and change only the genotype, then what would be the phenotype? This is what we are assuming that all other factors remain constant. The, we are nullifying the environmental factors or the fixed effect or the mean of the population, then the particular SNP, how it is going to behave or affect the performance of the animals. That is basically X is then any to be matrix of the genotype. And that vector, uh, uh, the vector beta is P dimensional vector of SNP effect. The SNP effect we are counting for on the performance. And uh, uh, at the end is the residual error for all these effects. So this is a basic equation or basic sample which we have developed uh, in our own study to predict the performance of the animals. And again, I am telling you that this could be equally applicable for the plants or as well as the human side for the prediction of the diseases. Now, uh, in the next step, we're using this equation, we predicted the performance of the animals. So you can see here there are, uh, in this uh, uh, diagram, the first one, 
uh, you can see there are NA. NA means not applicable, so we don't have phenotype. And those phenotype basically are predicted and their prediction equation uh, value is given 0.16 uh plus point uh, sorry plus, plus zero zero two that means there is 60.34 so 60.34 basically it was in kilogram and that was the predicted performance of an animal so in this way uh, using these basic tools if you are well versed with that we can predict the animal performance at birth or at birth for in case of human we can predict it why that this particular uh, baby is going to suffer from these particular diseases or not? Or what's the prob probability that AI at the age of 40, he or she is going to suffer from the heart attack or not? Or uh, uh, going to suffer from the liver cirrhosis or not? So this is all about the prediction. And uh, in case of human, uh, uh, I recently attended a, an international seminar and people, they are working very uh, quickly on the personalized medicine. They will suggest to you the medicines based on your genotype, according to your genotype, which medicine is, can suit you and which medicine uh, have minimum chances of occurrence of particular disease after 20 or 50 or 30 years of age. So keeping in view, they, 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 they are working. And Israel is uh, the most advanced country in this term, along with the Europe. Okay, now um, all these things, how we can do. So there are certain tools. So there are two options, whether you are going to pay for their tools or you are going to do it uh, free. If they, these tools are free, remember you would, you, should, you would have to be a wonderful in your uh, programming skills particularly with the R programs or working with the black screen that we call the terminal or the DOS mode of the window. You should be very well versed with use of your computers if you don't want to pay for these uh, different packages. If you want to do it, these analysis free. Yeah, but if you have money, okay, there would be window-based or click-based system. And uh, for that, you have to pay a thousand of dollars. So what we have done in our lab, we have done all these work based on the, uh, you can say, freewares. And for that, uh, definitely I have to train myself as well as my graduating students to learn all these softwares. And definitely uh, every day there is update on these softwares and we have to keep ourselves up to date to uh, utilize these freewares. Now SNP management, when, uh, once we get the genotype data from the companies, now you want to convert them in a format in which we can analyze it. Because it is a just a text file and that text file is to be converted into particular format to be read by the softwares. And that for that, for SNP management, there are different tools. The, uh, the first one is the print and that is free, freeware. W stand for window, L for Linux and M for Mac. So if we talk about the OS, the third column, that is basically operating system. So operating system, you can use Windows, you can use Linux, or you can use uh, Mac. So we have been working with the Mac uh, uh, operating system, and it is uh, quite comfortable as compared to Windows-based versions. So lessons, we talk about lessons. This is free, and input system, it's have its own input format. So you have, first, you have to convert your raw file into the plain format to use it. Then SNP quality, QC as second software. Again, this is available on all three platforms. And uh, Lissons, this is on, on payment OS. You have to purchase it and uh, it can input Illumina raw files. It is, Illumina is going to give you the raw file. You can directly use in that, but for that you have to pay money. Then JMP genomics, again, on three uh, platforms. And uh, this is basically, again, Lissons software. And it can use many different formats. Then Golden Helix, again, many, uh, you can say format can be utilized and available on all three operating uh, systems, but it, uh, it will cost you money. Then the Progeny Lab, again, this is a license and need money. So there are only two softwares, the number one and number two, Blink and SNP QC, which are free. Bears, but for that, you, uh, you, you have to be a, a wonderful user of the any operating system, it could be Windows, it could be Linux or Mac, but you should be uh, very well versed with the command line of these operating system to use these software. 
Then for Jivas, that is basically genome-wide association analysis, which uh, one of that we did in our own uh, lab. And for that, you can use Plink. And Plink, again, this is uh, equally uh, good for all three operating system, Windows or Linux or Mac operating system. And this license is open, basically open source code. And then uh, it has its own format, which you have to uh, get to run this uh, uh, Plink. GCTA, again, this is freeware, and it, uh, it can use the Plink, Plink uh, format. Then Gamma, um, again, this is uh, for Windows and Linux. So GCT you can only use uh, in the uh, Linux uh, environment, while Gamma can be used uh, Windows or Linux, both operating system. And um, then the population analysis, for example, a mixture, or even in the human population, you want to see that your lineage is um, whether European origin or Arabic origin or Chinese origin or Asian origin, then you can use the admixture software or structure software. For admixture, uh, we use the playing software. Again, this is a freeware uh, structure. This is also freeware and developed by uh, uh, American University. Uh, this is available freely, but use of these both software, you, you would have to be very good in use of the computer. But remember that the admixture is only available with the Linux and the Mac operating system. The, the window version is not available. However, uh, on a lab, that is the last step. You can use, uh, use AS Ramble and that license. You need money for that. Then GemCell, this is also a license. This is a freeware, but it can only be provided to the collaborators of the Iowa State University. So we have GemCell, but we did never use it. We have been collaborated with the Iowa State University and they kindly provided us their software. And then VGLR, this is a, <coughs> again, it's a sort of freeware, you can say. Uh, it has its own source code. And these software you can use for the genetic prediction. So take home message uh, to some of my uh, presentation. So genomic selection is possible whether you want to do it in plants or animals, or in case of disease prediction in, in human sites. So this is possible. And uh, Alhamdulillah, now we can claim that we are with this technology that is free. We just need the genotype data and phenotype data. We can predict all this stuff. And definitely for that, you need some basic funding, seed money. In case of animals, uh, what we have uh, thought, what I had thought in case of national center, we envisage that uh, 7,000 animals, dairy animals, if it could be recorded and uh, genotype, then we can predict, uh, develop prediction equation and the future animals, they, their performance can be predicted uh, at birth. And, um, for example, if we're going to predict an animal at birth, what it would happen? What is uh, what is important for you? Basically, you are saving lots of money which you are going to spend on its rearing, its vet care, its management, its feeding. For example, uh, heifer is born today, and after five years, you come to know that this heifer is not going to produce milk. And during that five year, you have spent thousands of rupees, and this is all going to be waste. On, on contrary to that, if you are able to just at birth, let me know that this animal is not going to produce a milk, then what would you do? You will slaughter that animal and you will save thousands of rupees. So genomic selection is also important in this term. It's not only help us to improve our populations, our crops very quickly on a rapid scale, on a rapid pace, but also it help us to save huge money uh, which we can, uh, you can say, incur in, in terms of the uh, growth or sustainability of those animals until they reach to the life of that uh, production status. Similarly, for uh, I just told you about the uh, personalized medicine in case of human being. Those all things are based basically on genotypes, genotypes and phenotypes. And based on that, they have predicted, okay, okay if this is the genotype of a particular individual, he or she is going to suffer from that disease in that particular age. 
So this will help us to utilize the medicines or medical care for that particular individuals. Now for that you need definitely funds, recording and genotyping. Then the financial impact must be coming or shared with the industry of breeders. This is very important. Whether we talk about the crops or we talk about the livestock. Uh, this is really unfortunate that our breeders or our farmers, they expect money from universities or uh, government bodies or research organization, and they are not going ready to spend any money for their own crops. So they say, okay, in case of crops, you can give us the good seed and we are going to plant them, okay. In case of livestock, they would say, okay, give us money and we will do it. So until or unless industry, whether it's crop industry, uh, I mean agriculture or it's livestock, they are not involved financially in that exercise. Uh, we cannot do it. Uh, I believe that this is something impossible to do without the involvement of the industry. So uh, uh, keeping in view, we have involved the industry in another project. I will uh, give you a, a bird eye view of that. Okay, so then freewares, they are definitely available. Software for the analysis, they are available, but definitely you need a trained people, a specialized expert in plant genetics or animal genetics, whatsoever you want to do. And they must be have uh, excellent uh, computing facilities. Definitely without that, you can do it. Then under unabated with the ability to work, this is another important thing to improve any crop, crop maybe much easier because uh, you can do it in the glass house, in the control sheds and all these stuff. They can help you to accelerate the uh, gear of the genetic uh, improvement in case of crops. But in case of livestock, uh, you need a bit longer time and your policy should be sustainable. If your policy is not sustainable and your funding is not sustainable, definitely uh, we cannot realize this dream of improvement. So I'm just telling you the a new project, which we uh, got funding from the Pakistan Science Foundation. And in this project, we, what we have, uh, we can say thought out, industry is on board, industry is going to invest. What we are going to do, we will develop a software simple for recording and we'll share them and they will record it. And what we will provide, we will go for the genetic evaluation and give them the results. And later on, if you want to go for their genomic analysis, okay, industry will pay money for that. They will send the sample, they will uh, get their animal genotype. And what we will do, we will technically evaluate those data and give them the ranking of their animals. That which animals to be bred in next generation and which. So this is uh, another project. I just told you we have uh, received funding from the Pakistan Science Foundation. And uh, in this case, we, uh, you can say industry and academia linkage, what, what we have uh, going to do, uh, what we are going to do in this project. And I hopefully that it would be a different experience from a past experience, uh, which, we, which I had in National Center funding or uh, other USAID project or other PSF or HEC projects. It would be a different fund, uh, type of experience because industry is ready to invest in, in this case. So once they are ready to invest, then definitely they will own it and it will become sustainable. So it will, uh, I hope that it will not be just a research for the purpose of research or for the purpose of graduating the students. Rather, industry will own it or industry will make it sustainable. Uh, that's all for the moment and thank you very much. Any question, please. And I'm sorry for the interruption of the uh, internet during this whole seminar. Thank you, sir. Hello. Hello, Dr. Min, can you hear me? Yes, sir. I'm listening to you, sir. Thank you. Are, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, if there is any question, your house is open for questions and any suggestions. I think there is no question. And uh, thank you very much, Dr. Mohinuddin, for delivering a very informative lecture on the subject. I really appreciate it. And I'm also thankful to all the participants for their participation. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir.